Hello class, good day. Today we will be discussing um, our lab experiment determination of orifice coefficients. First question, why do we need to identify these coefficients? Okay, in practicality, kapag gumagawa ka ng mga um, heavy water projects, let's say dams, weirs, tunnels, um, pipes or drainages, you don't uh, eventually start na maglalatag ka agad ng konkreto, hindi ka agad gagawa ng mga, i-order mo agad yung mga gates, hindi agad ganun. Okay, you you start with the laboratory experiment, the nitty gritty. Okay, the small uh, values to have uh, for you to determine the models. Okay, and eventually you can identify this uh, coefficient, these values, the discharge, and then the corrected. Meron kang coefficient, ito na itinatawag natin na coefficients in order for you to correct these values. Okay, so maraming application nito tulad ng mga opening sa mga pipes, opening ng mga gripo, okay? So mas we have uh, in your hydro in our hydraulics and fluid mechanics, we have identified that there are sections that uh, are more uh, prone to frictional loss like Ano mang prefer mo? Square ba na butas o bilog? Kaya ang butas ng gripo natin, bilog. Okay? So, mas, ano siya? Mas efficient. Mas, uh, less friction, less, uh, less losses. So, today, we will be discussing three coefficients. Primarily, the coefficient of discharge, the coefficient of velocity, and coefficient of contraction. Okay? First, let's have our container, our vessel. And then this is our orifice, imagine. Okay. Then we will have our tank filled with water. Okay. Our vessel filled with water. So this is our water line. And then this is our orifice. Then eventually, we all know that this data from the top of the water line up to the center line of the orifice, center line, is known as your height. Okay? Then eventually, my butas ka dyan, we all know that this is, this will, uh, water will go out. That's your jet, or your discharge. Okay. Then we all know also that the discharge is simply the volume over the time. Okay. Now let's introduce the coefficient of discharge. It's simply the actual over the theoretical discharge okay and then eventually we know that the coefficient of discharge is a correction factor for your uh, theoretical or the actual for you to get the theoretical value Okay, and the other way around. Okay, so the coefficient of discharge. Now, um, we will not discuss that most of our, our lab experiment are dealing with 2 liters of water. Okay, so how do you measure that um, amount? You, uh, we measure simply the volume based on your container. Okay. Then, using stopwatch, you can get the time. I hope you get that. So, let's assume that we will be getting 2 liters of water in a container. Okay, so let's measure now the volume. Let's say we have a container. A rectangular prism. In order for us to easily determine, so we will not focus on the 2 liters since we were dealing with variables. Okay? So, let's assuming uh, how do you get the volume? Simply by getting length times width times height. Then, 
over the time. Okay, how do you get the time? Using the stopwatch. Okay, so in our laboratory experiments, you can easily uh, measure 2 liters of water, then time how many seconds it took for you to collect the 2 liters of water. Now, that will be your actual discharge. Okay? So, from your coefficient of discharge, CD, we have already the Q act to be this one. Okay? Now, how do we get the theoretical volume? So, this one, we have this in our uh, fluid mechanics days. This is simply your area times velocity, but then we will have a special formula for your uh, velocity. Okay? So, Q from AV will get the area of the orifice multiplied by the velocity of square root of 2 GH. Familiar? So, that will be your theoretical now, solving further, and finally, we'll get the CD to be uh, volume of water collected over the time it took to, for you to collect the amount of water over the orifice, area of the orifice, multiplied by square root of 2 9.81 multiplied by the height so this one okay. so from your hydraulic bench you can measure the height so that will be our first equation or the first coefficient to be determined okay now let's solve for the coefficient of velocity by now, we have an idea from the coefficient of discharge that the coefficient of velocity will simply be the actual velocity over the theoretical velocity. So, we will get that, of course, from our uh, kinetic part or kinematic part of your uh, model. So we have here our velocity okay, from the orifice. Now initially, that will be on moving on the horizontal axis, but we will have to determine x and y. Okay. y and x. So from your kinematics equation, we have initially x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. So from our uh, physics and kinematics, then your y simply y naught plus v naught your y component plus one half a t squared. By now we have an idea that we will uh, not have any. Uh, um, coefficients for your A. And then your A here will be your gravitational acceleration. Now, alin pa ang magsisiro? Does V have a Y component? A uh, vertical component? None. This is horizontal from your jet. Thus, V not Y will be zero. Okay? So assuming also that this will be our datum, we have our initial uh, points to be zero. Okay, so we have two equations: uh, x is equal to v t, and then y is simply uh, one half. G T squared. Okay? 
Now we have two equations with two unknowns. Uh, equation 1, tama ba? <laughs> equation 1 and equation 2. Thus, we will get, uh, so let's solve for B. Actually, class, this, this, this I hope you get now the idea that this B will be our theoretical velocity. Okay? So V, so let's find T. T is simply your X over V. Now simply input T here. So let's just get it for to be consistent. Okay, so Y will be equal to one half G x squared over v squared. Okay? Now, division property of equality will be getting one half g x squared over y. Then, getting the square root will get uh, Square root of 1 half g x squared over 1. Okay? Now, this will be our actual velocity. Okay? Now, solving further for our coefficient of velocity. Actual over theoretical velocity. Now we all know that the theoretical velocity from our coefficient discharge a while ago is simply square root of 2 gh. Okay? So solving further, we will get <clears throat> square root of 1 half g x squared over y all over square root of 2 G H. So from your algebraic function or algebraic terms, you can easily cancel G and then uh, multiply the two. So eventually, we will get C V over square root of X squared over 4 Y H. Okay, and that will be our coefficient of velocity. Now, finally, before we conclude this, to uh, this topic, the coefficient of uh, contraction is simply class the coefficient of discharge over the coefficient of velocity. So, the value of the discharge a while ago over this value. That will be our coefficient of contraction. So, if you will have any questions, comment below, uh, message me on Facebook, Email me in the blackboard. And I hope you learned something today. Thank you and God bless you all.